Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin and welcome back to my channel. So we're doing a digital piece today and it was a bit of a idea I had a, couple, a while ago and well, this this drawing, this stream, I originally did it just because I wanted to practice doing really thinner line width as you can see on the upper right corner earlier. That's it, I wrote down to note to myself like you should use thinner line weights for this drawing because I noticed recently my lines have been super thick and almost intrusive and I wanted to go with more thinner and softer lines and to create more variety with my line weights and having a thick line weight sort of prevents that because it makes it look super bulky so I wanted to practice um, thinner line weights I wanted to practice a little bit of perspective though I did fail a little bit when I started lining that and yeah, I think I did achieve it. Actually, for this video, it's just the line art and the sketching part. Because I haven't finished coloring the piece yet, <laughs> that's reason number one. But also because the line art phase took pretty long to finish. And the sketching itself was several drafts on top of each other. Because I constantly made edits and I came back to it. So, this will just be a line art thing. And then... When I finish the coloring, I'll upload just the coloring since that's, that's gonna take a pretty long time as well. A sort of standard sword stress, sword, swordswoman, sword, sword, sword person. <laughs> it's not even a knight to be honest, it's someone with a sword. And I don't even draw the sword in the end. I will eventually, but it's something that I'll just like tack on top of the rest of the body. Well, because I'm lazy and also I didn't really feel like drawing swords at the time. So as you can see, we're still in the sketching part and I'm constantly editing her anatomy because of the perspective, it really throws me off. Uh, I do have a posing figure to help me out, the SH Figure Arts Body Chan, but even with that, I, I still couldn't properly translate it to the canvas, which is something I will really need to practice in the future. So here finally I got to start line arting, doing the lines, whatever you call it. So I really do love how her hair turned out. Um, when I was younger, I had a lot of difficulty working with like these wavy, flowy, curly hair. So I've been a bit uh, intentional with drawing like this intentionally wavy hair. So yeah. So I'm starting out with a somewhat thinner line weight and I am trying my best to show some variety with my lines.
I've been trying to fix or uh, it's something I noticed when I do my line art in general, not even just digitally, I tend to bounce around the canvas a lot, especially when I just start getting bored with the area that I'm working on. But it doesn't really make for good video editing. It's super jumpy and all of that. And I've been trying to not do that, but I forget sometimes. <laughs> so please forgive me if you do see the canvas just jumping all over the place. And yeah, I'm doing my best to remember not to do it. <laughs> see, like that, I was working on the knee, and then I decided, oh, I don't want to do, I don't, really, I don't really feel like drawing the boot yet, so I jumped to the cape, and then I flowed naturally down to the hand. I didn't even finish the cape. <laughs> happy with how the anatomy turned out with this one, especially here around the knee and the feet area. Um, the head's a little bit big though, that is because originally it was supposed to be a somewhat top, not super top down, but slightly angled top view, and it was really meant to be a little bit bigger and like, yeah, but it didn't really translate well as I mentioned earlier, but I do like how her other limbs turned out, like, it's really nice for once. Because I used to have, or I still do actually, I have this problem where I tend to make the hands a little bit big, too big, like yaoi hands, if you're familiar with that, even though they're female sometimes, but <laughs> that was the thing I had to struggle with, and the, the fingers are always super fat and too long, but now it seems that I'm starting to fix that a bit. And another problem is with the knees, I just like tend to draw them straight, or... I would draw the calves and the thigh but not the nika because I didn't know how to deal with it. But now I'm trying to be conscious of that as well. And I guess the only thing I need to practice now is um, how I draw like the ankle area, the feet area, that, that sort of thing. So now I'm adding some thickness. Now, this is a technique I've known for a long time, though I was just lazy to implement it. But um, generally, you make the lines darker, or you add a little bit of weight to areas where things intersect. So with the hair, there's a lot of there's a lot of parts like that, so it makes the hair look a little bit thicker. But it also gives it a bit more dynamic action to it, or it looks a bit more three D instead of like flatly on top of each other. So I'm also doing that for like the cloak and everything, I do that for everything. It's basically just adding a little bit more thickness to the intersections, like the edges and stuff like that. And then um, do, I'm doing my best to keep in mind where my light will be coming from, though I did kind of forget that in the end. But, <laughs> or rather, when I started coloring, I put the light in the wrong place. Oopsie. But yeah, as you can see, it makes it look more polished. Unlike with my usual stuff that, well, since before my line weights were also so thick, it looked like pretty uniform. But now that I'm using thinner line weights, it's more apparent that there's a bit more effort and polish into it. One thing I want to try out in the future is when I start coloring, I want to do color blocking because usually. I would set down the base color, use the magic wand to select all the area, put down the base color, and I'll be super exact where I put my shadows. But it doesn't really... I don't know, it, it doesn't always work. So I want to learn how to do color blocking and make, and make the shadows and the highlights a bit more 
natural and flowing rather than being super controlled about it. Because that's one thing one of my friends commented, but they said it in a really nice way. They did make me realize how I draw. She said in one of my watercolor pieces that I'm super, like the way I control it is super controlled. And I thought, oh, I, everything I do about when I draw is super controlled. So I guess that's something. It's not really something I hate, but I want to be a bit more free, or I want to give more flexibility to my work. So yeah. So I'm not sure when the coloring part of this will go up, but I will link that in the end card when that happens. So for now, you'll stick with my normal end card. <laughs> And yeah, I did enjoy this. It was a bit tough and tedious, but hey, it's a good result. So please like or subscribe if you want to see more. Follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, DeviantArt, and I'll see you around.